This is one corner of my office. And then coming around to the left, probably isn't the, uh, is uh, the, where you can see my cabinets. Okay, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's, I have it, I've had this built in. Okay. Um, and I, it's a small room, uh, but I recognize how lucky I am that I can have it. You can, you can take that off. Thanks, Z. Um, how lucky I am to have the office because, um, you know, I, when I was reading these things about, um, about, uh, you know, my first question, I, I made this in a series of questions. The first question is, where is the office going to be? And, you know, they were like, you know, like, well, in, in this empty room, you should take this empty room. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, you know, like those of us maybe who have empty nests have empty rooms, but uh, most people don't have like a, an extra room to make into an office. Or if they do have an extra room, it is a tiny room. It's not like, you know, and they're talking about like how you're going to position your furniture. It's like, you know, may, sometimes you're lucky if you can get some furniture in the room, right? So um, anyway, I just, like I said, I, I, I know how lucky I am to have this space and um, to have done with it, you know, what I wanted to do with it. But um, anyway, um, so, uh, you know, like they, you're not, you know, most people are not gonna have, you know, enough room for, you know, the, the desk and the credenza and the file cabinets and the table, the conference table, <laughs> which are very handy, but it's not, you know, exactly necessary uh, for most of us working from home. Um, and of course, there's a difference between people like me who are working from home, but not for work. I don't know how these people are doing it who are now telecommuting, even though they never had planned on telecommuting and they're trying to carve out space and they have kids at home and you know it's so difficult. Um, but we're gonna talk about some of the options. Uh, so if you have a small room like mine, which is nine by 10, that's great, okay? If you have a big room, maybe that's even greater. Um, but um, people have made do with closets, although I love it also when they say an empty closet. Like, who the heck has an empty closet? I have never met anybody that has an empty closet. Um, <laughs> you know, you can empty a closet at, at, at great trouble to do that. If you have a walk-in closet and you can empty it, more power to you. But if it's not a walk-in closet, although I have seen things where in a regular closet, it's just a desk and basically your chair is kind of like outside this closet area, you know, so you can hook up your computer or whatever, if you can put a if you can put an outlet in there. Um, but um, for most of us, it's, it's going to be a small, um, you know, it's, it's a small room or it's a part of a room. And if it's a part of a room, you have to be able to set it up with a screen or something probably to give yourself a little bit of privacy, a little bit of, of um, um, you know, uh, ability to work without seeing everything else in your life while you're working. Um, have any of you worked from home, like for work? Yeah, I thought you did, Pat. What, so what's the story? How, we, how did it go? I have an office. I have a room upstairs that I converted to an office. But the truth is, it's cold in the winter. And mm -hmm. I find that I spend most of my time on the counter in my, uh, on the island in my kitchen oh, instead. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen your kitchen. And I have baskets. Uh -huh. that I carry around. So uh -huh. <laughs> whatever. I have three different things that I do things for. So mm -hmm. each one is in a little bin yeah, and, okay. I, and I carry it down here and I put it away when I'm done. Okay, so you don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> You're already organized. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, the basic, um, you know, like most of us have, if we have a space and we're lucky enough to have a space, it is not a humongous space to, to use. And um, but there's a, you know, there are a lot of options that you have, um, you know, and a lot of them involve, you know, taking a corner of a room or taking a closet or something um, and appropriating it for, for an office. Um, some people use a basement. So sometimes that gives you a lot of space. I don't know if I'd be comfortable with an ocean of space, you know, like I like things a little more compact, but, um, but that's like, you know, that's another option. If you have an, if you have a walk-up attic or if you have a basement that's, that can be used as an office as well. 
Um, okay. Um, all right. Mo a lot of us, but realistically, a lot of people are using like the kitchen table or the dining room or, you know, something along that line, which does entail sometimes like, you know, picking up and, you know, at the end of the day, after dinner, you, you have to pick up. Um, and so, so Pat's solution with the baskets is probably a terrific idea so that, you know, um, it can go away quickly and without, you know, uh, a huge effort. Um, if you actually need the space for something else. Um, okay. Um, all right. Uh, one of the things that they talk about, you know, because I've read a lot of stuff now in, in terms of, you know, the home office business. Um, if you're just starting a home office, or even if you've, you've got something, think about what you like, because the research indicates that um, if you have a lot of control if you really have organized this yourself and uh, you know like and planned out what you want and and the, and the choices are your choices not imposed upon you you can be more productive so that that makes it um you know like a good idea to really be thoughtful about you know what you do um uh, if you like to be surrounded by some tchotchkes you know like your the, you know like your mementos your your you know like i have a couple of paperweights my husband gave me or my my favorite little clock that sits on a pedestal. It's like a big pocket watch, you know? Um, but, you know, if it's not gonna be distracting to you, some people find that stuff distracting. They want it, you know, cleared off and, and, and pristine and, you know, like maybe a pencil cup and that's it. So whatever, so make the choices that you wanna make, not that some book tells you or whatever, because you will do better in, um, a space where you've been thoughtful about the choices that you've made. Um, and um, uh, one of the things too, if you're working in a small space, consider if you don't have a window, like if you're in a corner of a room with no window or you're in a closet, no window, um, consider uh, a, a landscape painting. I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> Make you feel a little like you're outdoors. Um, okay. If you're setting up an office from scratch and you're gonna paint, think about um, the color. Apparently, and I never realized this, or maybe it's just because it's according to Feng Shui and I'm not a huge fan, but um, green is associated with growth and decisiveness, okay? And actually some research has shown, I'm a little bit more on the research end than on the Feng Shui side, but um, research has shown that um, people can be more creative you know, if, if, the, um, in the wall, if, if the place is green. Um, as you can see, my office is pink, so it's not green. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know all this. Green is my favorite color, but I didn't know all this. But, but they've also said that green plants, and I have plenty of plants because my sister keeps dumping them on me. Uh, she thinks I should be, um, she, at one point, she would go around saying, Pat doesn't like living things. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any plants. I wasn't big on, I had four kids. That was enough, that, you know, uh, and I, I didn't have any, any I, I didn't care for pets, even though we've had two dogs in our marriage. Um, so, um, but, you know, so she starts feeding me these plants. She keeps bringing over plants. So um, I do have quite a few plants now. Um, so I do have some greenery in my room, but um, so that's supposed to be, but my thought is more than going for green. So you're more creative or decisive or whatever, um, you know, go with the color you like, go with something that, you know, makes you feel good so that you like being in the space that you're in. Okay. As long as it's not putting you to sleep, you're good. Um, and then there's, um, have anybody made those choices about their office with that idea that, that you're going to be in this space, like that, um, well, I'm in the room. office right now and it's green, <laughs> but, I'm but did you consciously make it green because Feng Shui? No, green no, green. because it, it just is <clears throat> coming, but my question, I just wanted to put this out there, uh -huh. my new place. My office right now is a small room. It's like 10 by nine by 10, whatever. That's my sewing room, mm -hmm. office, and a guest room. That's tough. That's tough. Um, you need a Murphy bed. <laughs> I, have a, I have a bed there. 
but I might just t not have a guest room. And then I have my sewing table and then my desk and. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I just have, you know, work stuff in here and um, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm comfortable, but I can't imagine making it, you know, for a couple more uses. So um, yeah, that's tough. But you, we make do with what we have, right? Right. Um, okay. Furniture. All right. So um, the furniture, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many times I, I laughed reading this stuff. How you should position your desk in the room. I'm thinking to myself, some people are lucky if they can get the desk in the room. <laughs> Without and like custom making, especially if you're in a closet, you know, like this is you know, this is not a lot of choices here. How are you going to position this? And how if it's on the diagonal and facing the door, that's a commanding position. Okay. So when I was working, I didn't want my um I did have my desk facing the door, but not for those reasons. I didn't want to be my, my back to the door because as a psychologist, everything on my computer screen pretty much was confidential. So I didn't want people like popping into the office and being able to read, you know, what was on my screen. So facing the door was like a much better way to, to do things because it, you know, kept things. Plus I could see the people whose faces were in my right. window, you know, um, and I could tell them, I could wave them off or I could, you know, ask them in. Um, but, um, but, but apparently facing the door is a commanding position. So, um, and um and then in, in terms of desks, it's really interesting because I don't know, have, um, have any of you had experience using a standing desk? No? No. All right. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's my office again. Okay, that's a, that's a standing desk. It, it raises, and this is a good size one, like because you could actually have some stuff on the desk if you wanted, but it will, it will raise to a level where you can work on it when you're standing or it can, you can lower it to, to a, a sitting level to work at. And, um, you know, they found that actually people who've used a standing desk all year might lose five pounds <laughs> because they're more active, you know, they they move around more and even just the fat, the, uh, just standing uses apparently more calories, I guess, than sitting. Uh, so, um, you know, a lot of people using them like for, for health reasons, they feel that they are, right. you know, that that can benefit them. Um, so this is a, this desk where the whole thing rises. Um, some of them are narrower, you know, and more just like for your computer. This is a this is what they call a, um, a what do they call this? What is a, a compact? This is this goes on top of a, a desk you already own, but it also you know raises and you know so you can use it as a standing desk. So a lot of these are great because they are they are convertible. So it's not like you have to stand all the time because. Standing all the time can give you a backache, can be, um, you know, um, it can, it can sometimes for some people to hurt their feet or their knees. Um, so it's, it's better for a lot of people to be able to switch their positions, you know, and, and to be able to raise it if they wanted to, to lower it if they wanted to, or have certain times a day that they, you know, they do that. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I, you know, I think it's an interesting idea. I've thought of it myself, like, you know, oh, maybe standing desk, I don't know. Um, I have, not invested in it. This this runs something like this runs. I think um, you know a hundred to two hundred dollars, something like that. Standing desks that are motorized can be like seven hundred. They can be very expensive. They're very expensive, but um, um, you know, so it wouldn't be a huge investment for for a, a desk um, a desktop converter. Um, yeah, that's what they call it. A standing desk converter. That's what they call it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. Um, Okay. Um, all right. So, so that's the desk. Most of us just have a, whatever size desk you can, um, you can fit in your, the space that you have. And, you know, that's what you go with. Um, when I had this made, I had it just built in all around so that I have on my printer, like I have one, it's almost like an L-shaped desk, but it goes along in one direction. Um, you know, I have my printer and my inbox and all, you know, here. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, okay. Also in furniture, if you're limited on space, a bookcase is a good idea because you can make use of the vertical space. If you don't have a lot of floor space, a bookcase uh, and, and um, baskets on a bookcase can hide a lot of stuff. 
that you might, you know, that would be handy. Um, and of course you can take it down and go through it or you can pull it out and, and um, uh, you know, so a bookcase is not just for books. Um, it can, um, it could bring some greenery, you can put some plants on it maybe, but it's also a lot of it is, is, you know, if you have bins, you know, attractive bins or baskets, then you have place to put stuff and, you know, <laughs> not the sky is the limit, but a little step stool, maybe the sky is the limit um, on, on, on using that vertical space um, if you don't have the floor space. Um, and then, um, uh, okay, and a file cabinet. Now I know everything's, they kind of like lead you to believe that everything's digital and you don't need, um, you know, papers like passe. And I think we all have a lot of paper that we have to keep. There's always stuff that you have to keep. If you can fit in a two drawer file cabinet, you know, that's terrific. Not everybody can do that. I mean, like depending on the, the amount of floor space you have, yeah, on, on, you know, on, on um, you may not, you may not uh, be able to do it, uh, but there are hanging, look, let me see, I've got one here. I just use this one on my desk. Just, but there are things like this that, you know, are, Hanging file folders, the, hang, the folders fit in, you know, drop in. Um, and this can stay on a desktop or on a bookshelf. Um, they're also boxes. If you need something that's more, um, uh, a, a small file cabinet, but it's you want to keep it secure, there are also boxes, file, file boxes that lock. Um, I don't know that any of them would fit on a bookcase though, because bookcase is usually like nine inches deep or something along that line. So um, you, but, but you might be able to keep it on the floor someplace where under a desk or wherever. Um, but that's another, that's another possibility for files. But I think most of us need something for paperwork that you have to store, you might have to access, you, you know, you can't throw out. <laughs> So, um, you know, you have to kind of think in terms of having something uh, for paper. Um, but, you know, depending on how on on the, the, the floor space in your room, you might not be able to, you know, put in some big file cabinet. Um, anybody have. Um, oh, and then the other thing, you know, I'm looking to see on my list of furniture here. Um, <laughs> there was, you know, like if you have if you see clients in your office. So now we're talking like major. I mean, this is to me is like when you buy your house, you know, you need to have, you know, a, uh, a home office for, you know, the clients to come. Um, uh, an outside, um, a separate entrance is really a good idea, but that's kind of a rarity too. But in your office, they suggest um, either like a, uh, a conversation area where you can sit down with somebody or, um, you know, a conference table kind of thing, which is good if there's gonna be papers and stuff out, you know, it, it, that would be handy. Um, but I don't know that any of us are in that, you know, position where you're really running a whole business from home, um, which is kind of what, you know, I'm thinking of is like, um, you know, a lawyer or somebody who sees, you know, clients in the, in the, um, in the office. So, um, and then we talked a little bit about furniture positioning. I just think it's so funny. Um, okay. Um, I don't have a lot of choice now. I can't move. I don't know what I wrote down here. If you... If you don't like the way the furniture is, you can always rearrange it, unless you do what I did and spend a lot of money on some stuff that's built in. This is not going anywhere, you know. Um, any comments on furniture? Yes, I wanted to ask you about chairs. Not that, I, that doesn't concern me because I don't work from home, but be, when people started working from home in my family, that chairs, was chairs became an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, getting a good chair when you're sitting in your, in front of a computer all day long. Yeah, and you know, um, I had, let me see, I'm just trying to think where they bought it. chairs, which, you know, return chairs, but anyways, everybody seems settled, but that was a, an important item. Yeah, because, and you know, I don't know where, I, I can't find it in my notes right now, but chairs, they talk about, um, you really, you really, if you're gonna spend any kind of time, you need a chair that adjusts for height, and the height of the armrests, and um, the um, it should swivel at 360 degrees. And you know that's important because if you're if you're reaching all the time, you know, like it's good better to be able to you know swing around, right? Then uh, than not, um, uh, so that you can reach more things more comfortably. Um, also, lumbar support in the back. 
Um, I don't have any lumbar support here, but then I'm not spending, you know, hours a day in right. this, this chair. Uh, but yeah, all of those things are a consideration. And I really, you know, um, I can't say them, you know, I'm certainly not an expert in this. I read a little about it, but yeah, like this, you, you chair, if, if you're going to spend, Pat, do you spend that much time a day? But how, what's your chair like? I'll go back and forth. I don't, I don't sit for like eight hours a day or anything. So yeah, my chair in my office is, is all of that. Uh -huh. Okay. But I think that what happened last year is everybody went home and they just did the best they could with whatever they had. Uh -huh. And when the, what I'm hearing a lot from people who are working full-time from home is that in the new year, their one goal is to really get comfortable in their office. Yeah. They made do last year, but they need a chair now. They need er, you know, an ergonomic setup for their keyboard and everything. Yeah. Stuff yeah. that they just live with. Oh, I'll sit on the bed and I'll work on my laptop. Yeah. It's not working anymore. <laughs> I mean, that's to me that would be like a nightmare. Even if even if you're only gonna be there like for like a 45 minutes, it would drive me crazy to be on the bed or something, you know. Yeah. But I know a lot of people do that. I guess if you grew up with a laptop on your lap, wherever your lap was. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know that I could do it. Um, but yeah, a chair, I think a chair is vitally. No, the, the chairs became a real investment for everybody. You know, yeah. Well, yeah, because it is a major expense. Yeah. I mean, my it's two chairs, right. yes. I do like this chair for the amount for amount that I use it. But um, I, we bought, I, I bought, you know, I've got two chairs in the office because sometimes I would work with students, you know. Um, but it's, um, you know, they were from Costco. <laughs> This wasn't a major investment. <laughs> so if I right. feel empty, I can walk around, you know, but um, okay. So lighting, this, there's more on lighting. I never gave lighting a second thought, you know, um, but lighting is, I mean, I do have test lighting. I have a, a lamp on my desk that I can, you know, if I'm reading something, I, you know, I'll turn that on. Um, but uh, I, mostly I just use the overhead light and the, you know, the computer's on, it's backlit. But um, first of all, they talk about how you should have a southern exposure. You should have windows. You should have <laughs> windows in your office. You should have a southern, southern exposure. You should get lots of light. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> you've got a house already. <laughs> it's where the room is for the office. It's not necessarily going to have all these things. But um, they also talked about, you know, like there are there are light bulbs that you know kind of mimic daylight. Um, warm colors are better for, um, you know, uh, feeling comfortable or whatever, but cool colors are, are stimulating and they tend, to, people tend to be more productive in a cooler color, something that's more similar, you know, I guess to natural daylight. Um, and, um, you know, so it's, a, but it can be, a, a, you know, a real issue and, and the sunlight Natural light is really supposed to be, you know, like the best. If you can get a, a room with lots of light, then so much the better. But my thought is, you know, you get what you get. Like, it, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with an existing house, you know, and you're not going out looking for a house that has a really nice place you could use for your, you know, home office, um, you know, you deal with what you have. Um, but, um, but, you know, keep the, keep the curtains open and keep, you know, like maximize whatever light you've got is what my thought would be, so. Um, well, the other thing is to set it up so you do zooms with the, you know, there's a whole thing about lighting and zooms, yeah. about where the light should come from and, and all that. And the daylight can interfere with that sometimes. Well, I wish I had stock in a place that make those rings. Yeah. You know, the people put behind their computers so they have all this light. I, I just have my task light. I kind of push it up a little bit so it's on me, you know, but um, it's not all that terrifically effective. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, and then one of the things is, um, air quality. How is your office's air quality? And basically, you know, that's really, it's, it's not as bad at home as it would be sometimes in an office building because some of the materials that they use in building in construction, uh, do have like, they emit chemicals and stuff, which can be, you know, not so great, um, at home. Um, mostly they, you know, you really have to think about opening your windows when you can to, so this air circulates or having an, a, a ceiling fan so that air circulates. Um, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things they said here. Um, okay. Um, oh, 
yeah, keeping it clean, <laughs> you know, dusting and vacuuming so that, you know, or, and, and maybe a, an air filter, especially if you're sensitive an air filter, you know, with HEPA filter, I mean, that, you know, um, would um, uh, do. And then here's the other thing, the plants that you brought in to make your office green, they're good for your air quality too. So, you know, they're doing double duty, purifying your air for you. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, Today was the day. I'm like, I got to take down my storm windows and <laughs> open the windows. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, but uh, and you know, we're we living, living in a colder climate. You know, in the winter, we're not going to have the air circulating from outside. Um, but uh, anyway, that's something to think about. And it's it's quite truthfully, I had never really thought about the air quality in the office. You know, like how was that? Whether when I was working or or here. You know, like. Um, uh, what is my air quality? I'm not, you know, um, but it, it's good to keep that in mind too, as long with the lighting. Um, and, um, you know, uh, wires. Anybody dealing with wires? <laughs> <laughs> They're just, um, you know, that's from so many of us, um, the wires are just a nightmare because you've got your printer, you've got your shredder. I have a heater, there's the computer, there's the lights, there's the, you know, it's, it's endless. And um, what I have found in, not in this room necessarily, but in other rooms, like um, the Velcro ties, like, so you can use Velcro wrap around cords to keep them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, together. Um, there are also things that, uh, that I saw, I have like a panel that comes off. It's so hard to get it on and off. Um, and my, but my wires are behind that for the computer and, you know, like on this side of the desk. Um, and um, so, but then they were hanging down the bottom and you could see them under the panels. So I'm all good with that do, you know? But um, uh, Container Store had this thing where it was like a block that stuck on the wall and it had little, long, little rows in it. So you could like put the, the wires through so they didn't hang, you know? So that, that was really kind of handy um, because, you know, who wants to see all these, these wires, but, um, you know, there are, let me see if I wrote down, I wrote down, okay. Um, one of the things I would say though, is when you're thinking about the placement of your furniture, think about where your outlets are, because that's gonna make a big difference. You won't have, if you can possibly position your furniture so the outlets are handy, you might not have wires snicking all over the floor, you know. Um, uh, and nowadays, like if you have any kind of a renovation done, they put in outlets, they have to put in outlets, I think every 10 feet. So. You know, most of us, I mean, if you've had a, rest, uh, a renovation done late, like we had one in the basement a couple of years ago, and there are there are outlets very convenient because they're all over the place. Um, so uh, when we got this house, four bedroom house, every bedroom had one outlet. <laughs> so <laughs> we had the electricians come in and put in another outlet in each bedroom because it was just crazy. <laughs> um, and... Uh, Okay, but as far as the wires go, um, look for things like surge protectors because that's how it gives you a lot of outlets, you know, in one place. Um, uh, Velcro ties, uh, cord zippers. Have you ever seen those? It's like a, it's a plastic tube, um, and it has a slit in it, and you put the put the wires in the slit, so it kind of like bundles them together, you know. So right. You know they're not they're not as crazy in that kind of thing. Uh, I've never used one, but they look they look like they work. Um, adhesive cable clips. Um, I've seen these things for the top of the desk. Like you have a laptop and you're plugging it in and out all the time. Uh, this thing it it fits on it, it, it's adhesive onto the desk, and then you run the cord through it so the cord can't slide down behind the desk or you know, where you're crawling around the floor trying to find the, the, the laptop cord, um, uh, you know, it'll keep it, you know, where you can, where you can get it. Um, and um, uh, let's see, but I mean, you can also get them, I think for walls and you can run cables through them, like, so that keep them all to kind of together and, you know, running along the same baseboard or whatever. Um, and cord bundlers, that was kind of an interesting thing. Um, it was, they're made by, uh, command, you know, the, the like the command hooks, and they go on a wall, 
and then it's kind of just like a big hook. You can you can hook the you can hook your wires on this thing. I uh, you know I never actually seen them in person, but um, you know the thing is there are a lot of different solutions. So if if cords are a problem, even if it's just a problem because you can't stand looking at it, never mind that you're not tripping over them or anything like that. But if you you know if you just can't stand the aesthetic, um, I would say you know like. Um, probably on Amazon, there's probably a million things. Container store has a million things. Um, probably True Value has a lot of things <laughs> right. um, to, to contain the cords. Yeah. They look terrible and they, they get dusty and stuff. Oh, nasty. That's why I disconnected my, my computer. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have that option. <laughs> oh. uh, um, whenever, my, whenever my mother came to visit me with our friend, she said, Look at all these wires. Why don't you do something? Buy something to wrap them up in. I'm sure they have something. She's a smart uh -huh. woman. <laughs> Dan, if she could have, if she could have sewed something on the machine for me to use, she would have done it. <laughs> God bless those hands. Uh, yeah. Uh, my, if my father were around. Uh, yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Um, uh, is your workspace clutter free? Okay, this is, I mean, now, you know, anybody who knows me knows that this is like near and dear to my heart. Um, I, you know, you do, I think, work better if, for most people, there are some people like, they feel it's cozier with more stuff, you know, but um, for most of us, I think we work better if it's like, just what we're working on at the present time there without all this other stuff to distract us, you know, just what you need um, at the time. Um, so, you know, like, if you're in an established office and you're trying to spiff it up, I think one of the things that, you know, I would suggest doing is like going through things and pitching what you really don't need because, and you know, that's what I need to do. See that closet behind me? If I opened that up, you'd be horrified. I mean, actually it doesn't look too bad, but it's <laughs> packed with stuff. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of it's stuff that I had when I was working and, you know, elementary school now I have grandkids so now they are all the art supplies are coming in handy you know <laughs> um but it you know but the thing is I, I would think that you know like if you it is a good idea if you're really going to be serious about working in a space to examine things and say what do I need what don't I need what can go or what belongs someplace else that doesn't shouldn't be in this office you know to make me crazy um and um and then the other thing and I think this is maybe more important once it's once it's decluttered um, at night, you know, when you're finished your, when you're finished your work for the day or whatever, five minutes, you can pick up a lot of stuff in five minutes just to, you know, yeah. to meet the table, to meet in the desk or whatever, wherever you're working, um, just to put stuff away. Uh, so that, um, when you come in in the morning, it's not like, Oh, look at this. You know, you, you know, you feel a little bit more energized about working if, it, if your workspace looks like it's ready for you you know, you're more ready to dive in, I think. So I know that I doubt that any of us could do that every night and, you know, be very, you know, but, but we could be more consistent about it. And, and I think it, you know, it, it helps if, um, if you can be a little bit more clutter free in your office. Um, and the other, and this is, this is my last point, although I'm sure we're going to play stuff to talk about, but is the, um, enough privacy. Okay. Yep. If you're working, and I don't know that any of us, oh, except for Pat, are working from home for work, you know, that we have, um, you know, worked, you know, to do uh, for, a, for a paying job someplace. Um, but uh, if you are, then privacy becomes very important. Or if you're running your own business from home, you know, if, if it's your business and, you, and you're, you're running it from home. So... And, you know, most of us live with other people, so we need to let them know, like, that there are certain times that, you know, you're free to talk or they can, um, you know, um, wait until you come out for a break or something, you know, because you can't be interrupted all the time. I don't know how, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, my, uh, my, my son and my daughter-in-law, who live next door to uh, Susan, <laughs> <laughs> um they uh they were both working at home and they had and the two kids had no more daycare you know because the daycare was close to the pandemic so they had a they had a three-year-old and a one-year-old <sighs> and you know like i just can't even imagine you know um and if you're if your co-workers have uh families 
they can kind of understand a few interruptions, you know, uh, but if, um, you know, whether it's a pet or whether it's a kid or whether it's, you know, a spouse, but, um, you know, if you can, to the, but they, you know, they, their patients can only, you know, last so long. So you, you have to, you know, kind of uh, set some, some boundaries to the extent that you can about, you know, being in, yeah, sure. If anybody's bleeding, let me know. Um, otherwise <laughs> I don't want to hear from you until like lunchtime. Um, but uh, that's, so that's, uh, that's a concern. Um, uh, and if you are, you can use the corner of a room. If you use a public room, like, you know, a, a, a communal room, like the living room, dining room, something like that, um, then, um, you know, you have to kind of worry about uh, interruptions from other people. If you use your bedroom, which a lot of, you know, people have done, you know, and you make a corner of it, it looks professional enough on the Zoom meetings or whatever, you know, um, but still, you, when it comes <laughs> when it comes to going to bed for you, at night, you really have to like not be able to see that stuff. That stuff is gonna, you know, can interfere with your sleep. <laughs> Oh my goodness, tomorrow I have to do this and I have to do that. I want to call, call so-and-so and, and I didn't set up that meeting and the, you know, like, you know, you need to, you need to separate. Um, some people have said that um, uh, they get up in the morning and they get dressed for work, you know, no sweatpants or something like that. And then they walk down the hall or they walk to the next room or whatever. And now they're at work. And then they reverse the process at night. They might even change their clothes back to something more comfortable to, you know, to hang around in, um, just to set, you know, to 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 delineate work and home time. And that's one of the problems in the home office, is that, um, you know, okay, for me, it's you know, it's mostly just the home kind of business or being on my email or something like that. But for, um, you know, if you're really working at, you know, a, a job, a paying job, you need to like. You, you can't, even though you're home all the time, you can't be available 24 seven for your job. <laughs> or you, sh you know, like not if you're gonna be sane. So, you know, like you kind of have to set up, um, you know, for yourself, whatever, whatever works for yourself to kind of like make that, that demarcation between, you know, your life, your personal life and your work life, I guess, you know. So, um, anybody have any comments? questions i was going to comment on the the privacy thing that mm -hmm. um headphones or earbuds very often can help with some of that interruption and noise around you so that you oh yeah good i hadn't thought of that but i will yeah because yeah you're right right there, there's these new noise canceling headphones are are very good and um if you're just working yourself on something um you know when you're not interacting with you know people on zoom or well even then you can you have headphones um, uh, that would be very ha handy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pat. Anybody else have a comment? The sound barrier wall coverings work well, or the ceiling coverings, if noise and reverberation is an issue. So oh yeah. I, yeah, about. that's, that's another great idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you echo, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm carpeting will help with that too sometimes is to lay a car, you know, carpet rug, um, you know, in the space so that it's not a lot of hard surfaces. But yeah, like they have a lot of stuff that you can you can put on walls or ceilings to to um, kind of cut down on that that noise. I mean, for a lot of us, it's not a problem, but, this, you know, but if it is a problem, um, you have to think about those things and try to, you know, um, look for solutions. So, um, yeah, I uh, I thought this was really very interesting. I you know like I did, like I, I said before I just couldn't get over like how unrealistic some of these things were. You know we're an empty closet like this slaves me. <laughs> Nobody has an empty. I mean you can empty a closet, but you there's no, no such thing as an empty closet <laughs> unless it's purposely emptied or you're moving. Maybe if you're moving, um, and uh, you know like they just came, seem to think that you've got acres of space to just, you know, fool around with. And most of us don't, it's not, not going to happen. Um, 
uh, I know that uh, Anne, Anne was working on her uh, in her, her uh, dining room. How's your dining room table looking, Anne? <laughs> Still papers? Well, my dining room table is my conference table. Uh-huh, okay. And it has papers spread out because I have four or five projects going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My file system, mm -hmm. those um, plastic uh, rectangular boxes you showed, huh? I use those for my files. I have okay. four or five of them, mm -hmm. and they're in a very deep dining room drawer that was originally intended for table linens uh -huh. okay. uh, years ago when the house was built. <laughs> um, and I so, that's, so that's actually built in. What? Is that actually, that's actually built in? It is, yeah. yeah that's kind of cool. Yeah, um, uh, it's a small house. I'm I'm getting better about picking up after myself mm -hmm. um, each evening. Okay, good. It mostly Thanks. consists of taking each project and stacking it. Uh -huh. that's good. That's neat. That sounds good. But you know what? Sometimes, like even a little bit, like even even a little bit makes things look more orderly. You know, like if somebody came in the door or like I said, even yourself coming down in the morning, you feel like a little bit better than looking, oh, you know, look at this mess, like, you know, like, and and when you have papers spread out all over, like, you know, there are, no, uh, there are mornings I've come in here and <laughs> I'm like, holy mackerel, yeah. I don't want to deal with it. Well, my daughter, uh, one of my daughters lives down the block from me mm -hmm. and she does some tutoring uh -huh. and she has three children and a dog. And so she usually waits till her husband comes home mm -hmm. and he watches everybody. And she comes to my house to use my dining room table <laughs> to tutor. Okay. So that's good because when I know she's coming, then I really pick up. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. Sometimes as I'm picking up, I'm, I'm finding papers that I meant to get to a few weeks ago. Yeah. Got covered up. Yeah. So that, that works out okay for me. Yeah. But, um, so you are her we work space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what but um the whole um thing about this organization meeting being every month mm -hmm. reminds me constantly mm -hmm. to get rid of things and yeah. to minimize what I have in the house so that over the last year. The whole situation in the house has improved. Oh, good. I have to say that it's, you know, I might one week get rid of one shirt to Goodwill or, um, you know, in, a, in the dining room, I might get rid of two papers, but it's happening regularly now. It, you know what, it's cumulative. And sometimes yeah. not, not only are you doing that, but if you've been decluttering, sometimes like when you're shopping, it's like, do I really need that? Nah, you know, and you leave it there. So you're not bringing it in, you know, you're not bringing some of this stuff in or, right. you know, like if you happen to come across something, you know, um, you're, you're more likely to toss it instead of like, you know, piling it up and making it look better. You, you know, like, it, it, you know, like you, you have that mindset and it makes, it does make a difference. Yeah. 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 But I mean, there are, uh, I was outside raking today and I looked at my porch mm -hmm. and I said, it's a good thing I have a big tree in front because it looks like I live in Appalachia. <laughs> over the winter everything just got it's terrible but yeah. i'll i'll get yeah. i'll do it tomorrow yeah yeah, yeah i might invite you over to see my yard right now either and <laughs> so warm though it feels wonderful yeah, yeah. today was nice yeah. saying i'm yeah. just afraid it'll snow next week but no, not oh, impossible. what was that susan i said i don't think so i hope not no, I hope not too. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, but it's um, things are improving. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. not perfect, but yeah. that's okay. I'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Good. By the time I'm eighty, I'm going to be <laughs> really organized. <laughs> well, that's going faster than I'd like to think. Actually, <laughs> yeah. uh, anyone else want to share? Well, I've I've become better too, uh -huh. and um, I have gotten rid of some stuff, and 
I was so impressed with myself when I did the 10 bags for, for uh, the Vietnam vets. But yeah, I, I saw the picture and I was very impressed. <laughs> no, that's amazing. No. Went into the attic. Uh, you could come to my attic and probably get 10 more bags. <laughs> insane. But after that, I was motivated and then I, I did dishes and things like that. And I got yeah. four boxes. What did you do with dishes? I put them in boxes for, for Vietnam vets, the old dishes, you know, some that now, did you have to, did you have to wrap them or anything or you just put them in boxes? No, I, I wrapped them. I did it you, in the newspaper. You did them carefully like that? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. Well, usually, you know, you could just put like a paper towel or something in between each plate you know, and then wrap the whole bundle in some, you know, paper or something. Right, yeah. and then I stuffed up the side of the box. But yeah, and I so it doesn't it rattle around. Yeah. Over it so it right, but, but you mean regular packing boxes, like liquor boxes, something like that, and yeah. they would take, take those. Right, yeah. right, and then, um, so my, my new thing is to clean up my office area, and I wrote it down about clutter-free. That's a goal. Yeah. I have so many things, you know, books that I think I need to keep, you know, that I never looked at or, you know, computers for dummies that are uh -huh. about 10 years old and I don't know. Right. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think I'll put a plant in there. Maybe that'll motivate. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll improve your air and it'll be green so that you'd be more productive and creative and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I know, and I've said this before in this meeting is that, you know, like this, the, the shelves that I have here, like 10 feet of shelves, two, two 10 foot shelves over my head here. Um, you know, they're full of books that like, it's, and I think I maybe have talked about this last month. It's, you know, they talk about your, um, your this is the person I was, you know, and my whole identity for how many years was a school psychologist. You know, and all of a sudden, no more, you know, so I'm not an educator anymore, really. I'm not a school psychologist. It's like, you know, <laughs> where did that person go? Uh, well, they're in the books up here. You know, I'm not going to ever give a Rorschach again. I know that, you know, it's not going to happen. But I have my Rorschach books and, my, you know, <laughs> and, um, uh, you know so, it, it, you know, and, and last month, I know I talked about the aspirational self, the person you want to be, you know, I'm a person who, uh, you know, loves classical music. Well, you really don't listen to those albums, but you have the album so that, you know, everybody knows sure. you're a person who likes classical music. You know, whatever, whatever it is, it's like the person, we have a lot of stuff for the person that we used to be or the person we hope to be, you know, we want people to think we are, you know, so. It's a lot of you know. people. Right. <laughs> a lot of people, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a lot of people, which means it's a lot of stuff from each one of those phases. Right, yeah, you know? yeah. You're right, it's a good point. So, um, but uh, so that's another, you know, like, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of going through, you know, uh, that, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting rid of some of this stuff, but it's tough. It really is tough, I find, you know. Yeah. But I, 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 yes. Uh, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That was from my office. You know, nobody calls me Dr. Manning anymore. Like, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> no, no. Dr. Manning. Dr. Pat, come on. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. People at the library call me Dr. Pat, <laughs> but you know that's the kind of thing. It's like that's, that. that's the person I was. <laughs> when I retired, my daughter made a nameplate for me, and it said Pat Laden, Lady of Leisure. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. And that that's your identity now, right? <laughs> Except that you now you got three jobs you're doing. Yeah. But. And well, I still have mine, but it only has my name on it. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> it is. It's hard to give that up. It can work for everything. Yeah. No, I like to have these meetings, and it always gives me big ideas. Uh-huh. Yeah. I have great difficulty carrying them out. But yeah. I really miss m meeting in the library because I found that, that, you know, we had, like, a lot more discussion like this, and we were keeping up on people's um, you know, the projects that we were involved in, you know, so it was nice to hear each other's successes and, you know, people would bring their problems and say, well, I knew about this, you know, so um, I I'm, want to try to encourage, you know, that kind of, um, that kind of camaraderie. Um, but I think we have, you know, I don't think people had uh, too many, you know, 
questions today or, you know, wanted to know how to do their home office much. Although that was one of the topics that, you know, I, I, I had this, I did made this topic because somebody had suggested it after one of our meetings. Um, but, um, uh, you know, so we didn't really have a chance to offer anybody else our. No. Well, I think it certainly was a problem for people who were working from home, which were, means a lot of people. Yeah. I, yeah. It, I know my son over in New Jersey, he would sort of be in a closet. Yeah. With bad uh, air and things like that. <laughs> Not such great lighting. But, <laughs> but uh, no, it was pretty difficult and remains so for a lot of people. Well, and it may, it may continue to remain so because they're saying that, you know, a lot of companies are looking at, um, you know, uh, how much less real estate they need, you know, um, how much had the rentals, the, the office rentals in, in New York have gone way down. And um, a lot of people do like not having a commute and all. So they say that, um, you know, there's going to be a lot more probably working from home in the future because this was so successful for so many people, you know? It, there are problems with it for families. Oh, um, yeah. Like um, one of my daughters, she's got her work and she does it from home. But then if there's somebody, you know, they have to quarantine the whole class. Oh, yeah. She's got three children also working on Zoom. You have, you have to have a lot of devices. Yes, and then you can't be near each other because then you hear the other people's things going on in madness. Of course, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how it settles out. Yeah, well, see, so the thing is, for most people who are going to work from home, once schools are reopened, I mean, like, you know, it, for like, so looking forward into the future, that's going to be probably... Um, you know, a little bit more manageable because kids yeah. will be in school, you know, pretty, mm -hmm. you know, but there's school vacations, there's all kinds of other things that can cause some, you know, issues, but, um, you know, it would be more manageable, but I don't know if I would like it or not. I miss, um, you know, even now, like I've, I said to my husband just the other day, I miss, you know, the friendships at work, you know, like, and seeing people and how are you and has, you know, like, and, and how was the weekend and all, you know, like that, all those social interactions right. that you don't have when you're, that you can I find I, even when I walk around the neighborhood, if I see a neighbor I haven't seen for a while and I get to chat with them, yeah, I have so much more energy afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Just, just having the connections is, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but it'd be interesting to see what happens. But I mean, like you know, people have like some people have grueling commutes, and for them, it's like a heaven to be able to work from home. Yes. So it'll end up being some version of a hybrid. People, mm -hmm. people think so. that they say, you know. It'll be more flexible. Yeah. Work. Yeah. One of my neighbors works for the archdiocese and he's working, I think, every other week if mm -hmm. he goes in. So only half the workforce is in and they've spaced them out and whatever, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but um, you know, I don't know how he like how he likes that, you know. Um, they might have to rethink uh, commuting tickets if they <laughs> who's gonna pay a monthly commuting ticket if you're only going every other week? I don't know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Lots yeah. of things to consider. Yeah. My son goes That's to work every other day. I mean, goes to the office. I mean, every other day, yeah. Every other day. Yeah. I don't know once, you know, as time goes on, how how it's going to be. Because he's in the real estate world. Yeah. So I would think uh, the more he's there, the better. But I don't yeah. know. Hmm. So it depends on the industry. Like, I don't know, it, Anne Marie how Sarah is doing in all this, but I, I hear from the engineering and architecture firms and they really want to get back into the office to collaborate. Yeah. Yes, she has City Bank who, who their people can yeah. work from a computer at home all the time. Well, she's an engineer. And so she has like three screens because she has to do, you know, the structures and the, all, you know, the, the, all that stuff. and but she does a lot of traveling. So she sees people. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the people she works with are in Canada on the West Coast in Canada. And they're not, they don't wear masks and they, you know, they don't, they're just, it's just different. Yeah. So it's interesting though. Um, you have to be really adaptable mm -hmm. in the different, you know, different uh, fields.
and industries and kind so of my yeah. son and my son works for the federal reserve bank in new york way downtown uh, well he was way downtown now he's in his kitchen i think <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, my daughter-in-law works for uh, Bloomberg, but they're talking about not coming, not even thinking about coming back till September at the earliest. You know, mm, both, so, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Hmm. So, Pat, speaking of being flexible, can I just share the rest of the slideshow quickly? Because there was one interesting desk. Uh huh. So here's this desk. Um, yeah that we had. And then there's this desk. Um, Andrea, some of you might know her from Mindful Monday, and mm -hmm. she did the Reiki circle at the library. Um, she recommends a standing desk solution. She's been stand wanting one for her because her kitchen table is turned into her office and her yeah. neck has not been <laughs> loving it because mm -hmm. there's no postural support. So it, it looks very interesting. It looks like a hybrid of like a small table with a music stand, you know, stance. So mm -hmm. she recommended the tripod standing desk. So uh, that's been yeah. a win for her. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dr. Pat's going to give a resource list and everybody from Oprah to other, you know, Oprah magazine has 30 cozy home office decor ideas because you, if you want to up your productivity in your style game. And there's also how to, you know, 30 brilliant home office ideas to boost your creativity and productivity. Mm -hmm. The do-it-yourselfers uh, at the Good Housekeeping have a great article. And uh, HGTV came out with an article in uh, May of 2020. Now that one I think I did look at. Um, I, I have some too that I had checked out. So what I'll, I'm going to do is I'll send them... Um, I'll try to send a little recap of the, um, the, the outline of today's, tonight's presentation, and I'll send you these links mm. so that if you want to pursue any of this, you can you know make it easy for you. Yeah. Has anybody used, and uh, we talked about chairs. What about ergonomic chairs? Because at the library, I have a saddle chair and I know some people sit on one of those medicine ball chairs, like in the picture that that's on the uh, screen here. Yeah. I, I, I was tempted to do that at one point, but you know, not so much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like seating. Well, and... manager, I, I hated those medicine ball chairs. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think that no, my butt would fall. Nine the day over, and then would bring in a purple, purple ball that would roll. <laughs> um, you know, I've seen these saddles. I've never tried one. How's that work? It's amazing for my back. My posture is really improved, and it's good for my for my sciatica. So I love the saddle chair, and it's adjustable. Well, another thing. Another thing that's supposed to be good for your, I don't think it'd be good for working unless you had like a desk that you could plant like a, like a TV tray or something. I don't know. But um, what's really supposed to be good for your back, your, for your posture and all too, is sitting on the floor, like getting up and, and, and down from the floor. Um, so, you know, I do that, but I've been doing that for a long time, you know, um, but I don't know if it's on my posture. Anyhow. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you saying that you sit on the floor and work? No, I think it'd be difficult to work that way. Oh. But for other things, you know, like if I'm socializing or whatever, I'm as likely to sit on the floor maybe as a chair or, you know, like that sort of thing. Hmm. But um, but it's supposed to be good for your back and your posture. But is that the, the ball, the medicine ball? No, just sitting on the floor. Plane sitting on the floor. floor. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. that's not good, no. No, well, what would be good? I, have... I mean, I use a laptop now, but I wouldn't want to sit on the floor with a laptop. No, you know, no, no, unless you had, like I said, like a little, which I'm not going to go to that trouble of getting some kind of a, you know, a little desk oh. thing to put it on, but no, but um, yeah. yeah, no, I wouldn't suggest working there you know, that way. Maybe we really have one of those Pilates balls that my mother used to use when she had physical therapy, but mm -hmm. I can't see myself <laughs> sitting there. I'd probably roll off and fall down and break my <laughs> my back or something yeah. but people actually use those pilates balls to uh -huh. sit down patricia Do well, they they're, actually use they're them? big balls i i don't know what they uh pat do you know what they call them like but the people would they, they were just they were they're in a pilates, pilates balls yeah, they were, they're probably right Jean. they're pilates balls but yeah. they were they were appropriate, <laughs> appropriate size i don't think somebody yeah. who's 60 or over really wants to sit on one of those balls <laughs> <laughs> It's called the fitness ball, and it's really good to sit on that because you uh, engage your core. Yeah. Um, 
It's a fitness ball. They come in two sizes. Uh, so mm. you can see what size is appropriate for your desk. Huh? <laughs> you mean you could sit on that and actually do work, you mean? Wow. Yeah, the balls, yeah, the, those balls that people were using in the offices. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just one of those big exercise balls. Yeah. 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 And you can and you and and um it it because be, because of trying keeping your balance on it, you are you tend to be more erect. You know. Wow. So it's supposed to be very good, just like standing is better than sitting. And yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. just got one, and mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah. Well, I think we. I know it's only eight thirty-six, um, but um, I think we were on actually um, on the uh, listed from seven thirty to eight thirty. Usually nine. So I don't know. Over time. What? Well, well, now I know. If depending on which schedule you're going, we're either we we're either cutting out 25 minutes earlier, <laughs> or we're going more than minutes. Six minutes. So, late. so well, I mean, Pat, I, can yeah. we, so the next meeting we have the date for April 8th, and then did we want to just do a short brainstorm of anybody who has any topics? Yes. Want let me. To yeah. Let me. I got my pad right here. I will write down any ideas that you have. I I collect them. It doesn't mean it's going to come up you know, next month or even in a couple of months, but I collect the ideas that I get from people so that um, I can see kind of what, you know, seems popular. And also, um, you know, like sometimes it's like an idea strikes me. It's like, oh, that's a really good one, you know? So anybody have any ideas that you'd like to see covered in this meeting? Well, I would like to see porches, decks, garages, <laughs> and yards. Okay. Because as the weather gets warmer, those are all issues. Yeah, especially if we're going to be so learning to socialize more outside than we did before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else with an idea that they would like to see covered in this kind of a meeting? Noise reduction. Right. When you're living with excuse me in a building, noise reduction. Oh, noise reduction. Okay. If that's all possible. Right. I remember you you mentioned before something about noise reduction um i don't know yeah okay i don't i don't yeah, have acoustic there, tiles there, and there are there are things you can put on your walls and um you know to uh to eliminate you know some noise i don't know what they look like and i don't no. exactly know how they function i know they're out there mm. so, oh. i'm also interested in the inside of automobiles and <laughs> <laughs> well actually the clean car and what and I know that you are kind of like a survivalist when it comes to your car and how much stuff you know like emergency stuff you have um you could probably do a better job than I on that but um yeah okay cars uh and you should take a picture of your car and send it we should get everybody to take pictures of their trunks and their cars and then we can like talk about things and then <laughs> if you would put them up with no names attached. I don't know. I, 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 it might be yeah. a, brutal to listen to what people say. <laughs> Plus, how many of us are really going to take a picture of it as it actually looks? I mean, like, you know, like opening the trunk and putting it, you know, we'd probably spit it up first, right? Uh -huh. No, mine's only filled with shopping bags. So it's me really too. Cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, the best thing, the best thing I have, yeah, you know, we have all those shopping bags now. Um, but I had the, those um, uh, collapsible crates. Oh, I yeah. Have, I have two collapsible crates in my trunk, and I leave them up because then it's good to put bags, and the bags don't go sliding. Yeah. The yeah. Those mm -hmm. are very nice. Well, I have but, a you, but if you're going on a trip or something like that, you can always, you know, you can collapse them to make room for the suitcases or whatever. If you, ha if you have to have the space, you can collapse these things. I, I think they're great. So, but right now they're full of shopping bags. <laughs> That's true. Pat, we also and, have the productivity apps. Um, people are still trying yeah. them out. People have been emailing me with some reviews. Which Oh, you. good. That would be that would be great. If you could pass those on to me, I'd appreciate yeah. it. Z. Yeah. Um, yeah, we uh, that was one thing I thought maybe I'd do both tonight, but I just didn't get far enough along on the productivity apps that I, you know, I really want to know more about it before I, you know, bring bring it up. But um, if you if any of you use apps to help with your productivity, you know, like, let, you know, like 
you can bring that information. We may do that next time because I did, you know, I did start looking into some of those things. So um, we might do that on April 8th, but I will let you know in advance what we are going to do. So anyway. Um, okay. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming. It's always, always so nice to see my friends' faces. <laughs> Well, thank you, Pat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe we'll thank see each other in the, in the neighborhood or whatever, you know, and I'll see you Hopefully all next soon. And I'll see you all April 8th, right? Yes. Right. April okay. 8th, 7 30. Um, same Zoom link for now. We're not changing it yet because Zoom okay. links expire after a year. Okay. So that's something good to know. And uh -huh. yeah, we want to thank Dr. Pat for her time and her knowledge and all of you for joining in on the conversation, because if we don't converse and we don't share ideas and thoughts, uh, you know, it, it doesn't go anywhere. So it's great to have a wonderful curator and Dr. Pat and a wonderful team and all of us who show up and discuss things. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. I'll Take see you in April. Yeah. Okay. Bye. See you soon. Be well, Bye. stay well. Thank you.